Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. You guys like my hat? You digging it? You digging it? It's my kid's hat. I uh, nabbed it out of their room. <laughs> Thought, you know what? It's Christmas. Let's throw on the Razorback, the Nile Davis jersey, right? This is the Nile Davis uh, and let's throw some lights on. Let's just get excited, huh? All I'm, all I'm missing is the eggnog. That's all I'm missing, everybody. The eggnog. The little, little. Nah, I'm saying. Nah, I'm saying. I haven't had anything to drink yet. Um, what a day, though. I feel like I have. I'm drunk on happiness. I feel like this is a day that we've been waiting for for quite some time, and here we are. My hog informant. I, well, I, you know, I do what I can. What's up, John? John Cun. Is it Cun or Coon? Or like K-O-O-N. God, that I didn't mean for that to sound bad. Like, But how do you pronounce that? Help me out. I think it's Cun. Like like maybe K-U-H-N, right? I like that Rakeem pick. Yeah, you like that? How's he, how's he doing over here? How's he doing? Oh, there's my Rakeem. There he is. I love him. Man, he, let's talk about that. Are you kidding me? This guy, easily a draft pick. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that he's a first, second, or third, or fourth round pick. I would probably guess, you know, I don't know, maybe a third, fourth rounder. Maybe. But regardless, you got to understand, I think sometimes people get this mixed up. They're like, if you're not a first or second round draft pick, you're obviously first round. The money is there. What are you doing? If you're like I've I've heard that argued so often across social media. Good lord, it's like you don't understand. Imagine being 20 years old, 2021. 20, I think Boyd's 21. Maybe I'm wrong. Imagine the possibilities of the income that comes just from being like a fourth, third, or fourth round draft pick. You know, obviously nothing's guaranteed but the possibility is just r ridiculous you know you look at someone like Alex Collins had he not screwed it up he'd be on a roster somewhere making some great money um you know I mean uh, we obviously we could go back to the greats like Darren McFadden and, and Felix and and obviously what Hillis was able to do in the NFL but I mean think about that he passed up that opportunity to come back the risk is so high for running backs, I, I mean, look, they're, it's not the same as it once was. That position, it is. You see a lot of teams that like to they like to run by committee. They like to have uh, two running backs to kind of you know. Uh, you have your 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 like Ezekiel Elliott types, right? Who's going to get the majority of the carries? And you have some offenses that like to run with different running backs, guys that can do that offer different things to the offense. Change of pace back is what they're usually called called. Um. And you and you're forced to kind of share, share. I'm sorry. I'm trying to combine two words there. Um, what you doing, Sherry? Sorry. Uh, you're sharing carries between two two players. That's what makes fantasy football pain in the ass. It's like I can remember. I've been playing fantasy football for like I'm not kidding. My senior year in high school is my first year to ever play fantasy football. That was. 2001. I graduated in 02, but the season started obviously that sep or uh, that that beginning of the semester, and I can remember drafting people like Marshall Falk or Jerome Bettis. Those guys were guaranteed to get a ton of touches, right? They're guaranteed to get a ton. Of now it's so different. The game has changed so much, you know. And running backs just don't have the durability. I'm I, I'm sorry. I'm going off on a tangent there just for a second, but I, I am. I am just surprised. I, I said he would not come back. I didn't think he would. I really didn't think that he would. And he did. Kudos to him. Oh, my gosh. That's, to me, as big as Bryles being announced as the uh, offensive coordinator. That's huge. I could, I could go on. It's incredible. Today, is, it's just it's wonderful. I'm just missing my eggnog. I need to ask my wife, actually. She's at Walmart. Hang on. Let's do this together. Let's do this together. Dear wife, grab some nog. Grab some nog. 
chat says it's I'm just gonna say that you guys said it's a must and oh yeah I need more rum <laughs> that's my that's my when I do drink it's not often but that's why I like I like rum dear wife I, I this just happened this happened you guys my nuts are gonna be roasting over an open fire I don't know if I should have texted that. <laughs> I'm in so much trouble. She might actually be in chat, too. I'm in double trouble. Uh, I, today is just exciting. It's so exciting. I'm so thrilled. I hope you guys like my hat and my, my Nile Davis jersey and my Christmas tree. My Charlie Brown Christmas special Christmas tree back here. Hope you enjoy that. It's a must. It is a must. You're right. I don't understand people. I, okay, I take that back. Okay? Eggnog is like the pineapple on pizza debate. Does pineapple belong on pizza? It does, by the way. Um, it doesn't even have to be a Hawaiian pizza. Just throw it on there. I'll eat it. I love pineapple. And then it's like eggnog. Do you like it or not? And it's, I mean, you know, Zach Arns and Ruskin and Zach are bashing my nog. And I brought him on here, and I, I kind of chewed. I, well, I, I didn't chew his ass, but I got on to him about it. I was like, look, man, don't don't hate on Thor's breast milk, okay? The nectar of the gods, which is the nog. God, people hating on my nog. I, I can't tell you how huge this is. First off, for Rakeem Boyd to come back, you look at the position at running back. Uh, they're going to be thin. There's still rumors floating around that Hayden might transfer. That's been floating around really since midseason. And, um, you know, so, and obviously, Deval Whaley's going to graduate. That leaves you with Amante Spivey. You got the transfer whose name keeps slipping my mind, the kid out of Arizona. Uh,. You know, you're a little thin back there, and you do have one guy committed. I, I don't know. You know, he's a big one. He's a big one, 6'1", 230-pound running back. But uh, you, you've got a lot of questions at that position. And I was thinking just the other day, man, when Rakeem Boyd, when he does announce that he's declaring for the draft, what are they going to do at running back? And here you go. Your problems are solved. Just like that, you feel a lot better about what's going on at running back. Bryles, who is known for putting together some impressive rushing offenses his time at Houston, uh, they did pretty well running the football. Uh, they did really well. Florida State's a different kind of challenge. I think it is interesting when you hear about a guy going from non-power fives, turns them into offensive powerhouses, and then he goes to somewhere like Florida State. Um, he wasn't terrible, and the only Florida State person I could even reach out to and talk to about uh, over the weekend, he's just a casual fan, um, and he had said that, like they don't want to like this isn't someone they want to lose, but they know it's going to happen. Um, they they really liked him as as a hire, and they kind of I guess I guess there was something going on with the quarterback situation. I, I didn't go into detail with him, but he did say he had some challenges this year and what happened at quarterback, and that's really all I got out of him. But I guess they either had injuries or something going on with the quarterback position. That's been that's kind of plagued Florida State since uh, oh crab leg thief. <laughs> Since Winston bolted for the uh, for the NFL to end up being a gigantic failure, I shouldn't say that. When you start, listen, you make a fifty three man roster in the NFL. That's you know that's huge. But for a starting quarterback, he has just outside of like one pretty good year, he has been a disappointment in the NFL. But uh, yeah, Florida State's been plagued with issues at quarterback since he's since he left, and I guess they wanted Bryles to come in and kind of solve that problem, and he struggled with it. And Florida State also had a I, apparently they had a lot of injuries; they were hit with the injury bug. And uh, I, I I don't have all the details there with what happened at Florida State. Believe me, we're I mean this week's going to be hard to get any information out of anybody because of the holidays, but. Um, you know, I guess we'll just, you know, more details will come out. I know that while he was at Houston, he was a baller of an offensive coordinator. I mean, uh, huge. And uh, did you guys see, by the way, speaking of, I was looking at, uh, there is a quarterback at Houston that's been brought up quite a bit, Derek King. There's a lot of rumors that this guy uh, could end up on Arkansas's radar, or will, probably will be on Arkansas's radar. He's looking to transfer. I guess he's in the portal. Uh, he's 5'11", 195 pounds, out of Manville, Texas. His uh, junior season, he threw for 63% completion ratio, 2,900 yards, or almost right at about 2,982. 
36 touchdowns, six picks. He had an adjusted quarterback rating at 167. His I don't know what happened his 2019 year. He got beat out, or, or maybe he got hurt. I don't know, but he didn't play the entire year. He didn't. His completion percentage dropped like crazy. I mean, it dropped about almost 13 percent at at about 52 percent with six six hundred and sixty three yards, six touchdowns, two picks, with a rating of 117, which is a pretty decent drop comparatively from 2018 to 2019. So he is eligible for. Uh, I guess he's a grad transfer technically. Uh, Maybe that's what it is. He's not in the tra- – he's, he's, he's a grad transfer. So, I don't know a whole lot about him. I've seen his name pop up a couple of times on social media. I'm not – you know, I don't read message boards. I try to stay away from them. Um, so, I, you know, some of you might know a lot more about him than I do. I, I have no idea what's going on with this kid, but apparently there's a rumor floating around that Arkansas could be on his radar as well now with the addition of Bryles at the OC with him coming in and taking the OC job. Oh my goodness! I am in. I'm in a really good mood. I really am. For me to bust this thing out, I hope there's not spiders. This is the jersey. It's been sitting in the back of my closet for I don't know since Bielema got fired. I think it was the last time I wore this thing. I think maybe I did it for a video. I can't remember. So I just threw it on really quick. I'm sure I'm, I've been bitten by something. Hope it's not a brown recluse. If I don't go live and you don't hear from me for a couple of weeks, that might be why. Damn. Spider, a Jersey spider, Razorback Jersey spider, bit tie. He's done. He's out. What do you guys think in chat? What are your thoughts on this hire? Ho, ho, ho. What do you think? I want to know. Santa came early. He sure did, Mr. T-Dub. Absolutely. Go hogs and go nog. Or go hogs and nog. That's right, man. Don't hate on my nog. Uh, go get him, Bryles. King would be huge. I don't know a lot about him. I have not done any research on him. Obviously, this week we're going to try and get on top of everything about Bryles and what he could bring to the table. Uh, Hog and Nog should be the name of this chat, the Hog and Nog chat. That's right. Anybody know where Big Lyman from Texas A&M is transferring to? I don't know what you're talking about, Michael. Um, I don't know. Jersey Spider. That's what it is. Damn Probably in there. He's probably bitten me like three. And that's the thing, too. You don't feel it. You don't feel the bite. And then you wake up, and you don't have an arm anymore. You just have a nub with, like, black around the nub, you know, because your arm rotted off. My wife had a friend in high school who was bitten on the leg by a brown recluse multiple times. And I guess it messed her up pretty good. So it's, you know, I look, spiders. Like, they don't terrify me, except those huge ones. We have every damn year around right before right coming out of spring, going into summer, we have this huge black and yellow some bitch that is just right outside our door. I swear to God, he's as big as my hand, and I got big hands. Okay, I got big hands. This son of a bitch, I bet he's as big as my hand, and he's just like blah. And if you're not careful, you know, you're walking, and then you get into his damn web, and it's like, oh, God, you know, alien on your face. This like, why? Why is something need to be that big? What is he catching? It, is he going after, like, bald eagles? Like, what the hell does that thing eat? Will that eat our dog? Our little Jack Russell? He's J- he's Jack Russell rat terrier mix. I think he could eat it every year. It's, this, I, well, it's not the same. I think they die every, like, every change of the season or whatever. That son of a bitch is huge. Call, a, call pest control. And they're like, I ain't messing with that. No, that's on you. You deal with that. That thing will eat me. And you spray it with like the uh, with the raid or whatever the uh, spider spray <laughs> gives you superpowers. It doesn't. It doesn't phase him. He like swallows it and spits it in your face. Uh, that's a banana spider. Harmless. I don't care, man. It is terrifying. That is terrifying. That's the only spiders that scare the crap out of me. Are those big giant alien? You know, they look like they're from a. Uh, Ridley movie, uh, g- giant alien looking some bitch is gonna eat your face off. Banana spider, he's cool. You guys know a lot about spiders. <laughs> Ty will be in the spider bite protocol status for upcoming podcast. We'll be day to day. Oh man, today was great. Bryles was huge. Um, it's also, this slipped past us, but when Apple White, I was reading this story too. 
when Apple White was at, hang on a second, I'm going to pull this up because I don't want to mess this whole f- story up. Uh, I don't want to follow Houston. What are you doing? I just want to go to their page. Come on, ESPN, work with me. Work with me. Um, let me pull the story up. Yeah, Houston vacates three wins from 2018 season, an academic misconduct scandal involving a tutor writing papers for players at Houston was – resulted in three vacated wins from the Cougars 2018 season when Major Applewhite was the coach. This has happened at Arkansas before. This happened with Patrick Beverly when he was uh, playing basketball here. And everyone said it wasn't on the coach. Uh, I, I, I don't know that you put that on Applewhite. But is that a blemish? Like, do you kind of look at that and go, I don't know. Because everyone's talking about the stuff with Bryles, even though there's no direct uh, link with him and the stuff that happened at Baylor. It was all with his dad. It's like none of the options, like what are morals in college sports? Let's be real. Like there's always something going down. Don't get me wrong. The Baylor stuff was way worse, but I don't think Bryles, as far as I know, had anything to do with that. But I was uh, the son, that is. The son. The guy that we got, the OC. But this stuff at Houston, that's interesting. They had to vacate three wins from the 2018 year. So, uh, yeah, you know, they played Oklahoma earlier this year and played them pretty good. Only lost 49 to 31. Yeah. Uh, I like I like it. I like Bryles. I'm not gonna lie. He was my between him and Lashley. I wanted you know if I had to choose, yeah, I would I would love Lashley. I know everyone looks at their bowl game and goes, Ugh. but you can't judge a guy based on one game. It's the body of work, people. You know, it's what he had to work with. You got to put it under a magnifying glass. And I absolutely would have loved Lashley, not just because he's a a hometown guy, but I think he had a lot to offer. But I'm thrilled about Bryles. I am thrilled. So. All right. What else did we have going on? Let me get caught up on chat here really quick. Uh, oh, throwing up the spider emojis. How dare you? What's the news on Rakeem? Just tuned in. Yeah, he's coming back. I'm sure chat got you caught up on that, but he is back. Here's his, uh, let me find the, nope, we don't want that one. Where'd it go? No, nope, we don't want that one. There it is. There it is. I can't, this, the print's too freaking small on my screen but there it is that's uh that's what's going down how about that Rakeem Boyd I'm coming back to help turn this program around and you know what you feel bad because it's like yeah that's what you were brought in to do the first time but your jackass head coach was in over his head Chad Morris you know bless this kid I'm sorry man like that that's huge I mean, he's a potential draft pick, and you know what could happen. God forbid, knocking on wood. Okay, I don't know if you heard that or not, but I just knocked on this on on my desk, which is, I think, wood. Maybe it's not. Okay, we'll we'll just say that it is. You know, he's risking a lot. That's huge. That is huge. Three star Drew Francis just decommitted. Yeah. So, uh, I. It, that's not surprising. I don't think they're going to offer him. This new staff. Um, so will they win more than two games next year? We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Like, I'm not ready to, to go in on that. I got bit on the right bu- <laughs> on the right butt cheek by a brown recluse. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my gosh. At least it was your butt cheek. Like, that's just, like, you know, right? It's the fatty part. Not like they didn't. You know what I'm saying? At least they didn't. I don't know. I hope not. And if so, please, we don't need all the details, or maybe the chat does. Uh, Cotton balls soaked in uh, eucalyptus oil. Spiders hate mint leaves, too. Michael's dropping some some spider knowledge on us here. I think we have one of the best staffs to step foot on the hill. It's pretty special. Odom as your DC and Bryles as your OC. Are you kidding me? This offensive, uh, this the O line coach. They also hired the tight end coach. I had that name up just a second ago. And I forgot his dad gum name. They hired their tight end coach. He's out of UCF. Uh, been told that's a good hire too. I mean, I don't know that I've ever seen someone. There's only a couple times when someone was hired on where I've had someone reach out and go, "No, it's not a good hire." So, I, I mean, look, you don't expect anything bad to come out of people. You know, when you're, when you're rebuilding a staff, it all looks great. We'll find out. Uh, they've got a lot of work to do. Let's just be real. John says, uh, Boyd's a real one for that. He'll always be one of my favorites because of what he's doing. Man, I'm telling you, I already love the kid. 
I I love the kid. The last chance you when he started tearing up talking about you know making his choice and and not being 100 percent positive if um, if he had made the right choice or not, but then ultimately signing with Arkansas, all the trials and tribulations that that kid has been through. You know, honestly, I and, and I don't think anybody should have blamed him had he gone pro, and I don't think anybody would have. I think Hog fans were prepared, especially when he put out that cryptic tweet, please respect my decision. So I he's a real one, man. I, I he wants to be he's a hog. That's a hog. That right there is the it's more than just the essence of a razorback. That's a razorback. Wanting to be a part of what's going on, willing to put in the work. And I said last year, Jacob and I both said this every single podcast on the Hog Talk podcast, give this kid more than 12 damn carries a game. And he's sticking it out. (laughs) William. (laughs) I hope you're kidding about that because I have no idea. Uh, Bro, he's missing a whole piece of his ass from that bike. (laughs) I hope that is a joke. If so, if you two know each other, I apologize. Uh, deep respect for Rakeem Boyd. Yeah, if if I were you guys, if you're on Twitter, hey, throw him a mad respect tweet. And uh, tell him Ty sent you. Tell him Ty sent you. And uh, throw up some mad respect for that kid, man. I, that's incredible. I, it just is. Boyd is an absolute G. Give him give him the ball. You're damn right. Ty, what is... Uh, was that on your shoulder, a spider? What are you talking about? Oh, God. Uh, let's see, Ronnie. Is this the same Ronnie in our Discord? If so, welcome. I don't know if I've ever actually seen you in a live stream. Uh, Boyd played us with that tweet, but I loved every every bit of it. He did, didn't he? He played us. He really did. Unless unless he had some. Uh, well, I, yeah. I can't believe the staff Sam Pittman is putting together. Yeah, that's the other thing about all this too. That's what that's just what is making this that much more special. It's like not only is this the greatest Monday because you've got Raheem Boyd arguably going to be you know he's going to be considered one of the top, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know how they're they're going to be skeptical of Arkansas as a team and that is sadly going to count against Raheem, but he he should be regarded as one of the top 3 backs coming back next year in the SEC. Uh, how about them hoop hogs? Yeah, I wanted to talk about that too in just a second, but I know you know everything right now is all about what's happened today with football. Uh, it was just a small b- <laughs> Rakeem the Dream possible Heisman. I don't know if I'm gonna go that far because you need a lot of other working pieces on on the well this team from the top down for him to even be halfway considered of even making the list but uh, he is I think if if the proper parts were built around him if he had a if the offensive line was was solidified if you had a competent quarterback I'm not saying a all conference caliber quarterback just someone competent someone that you could rely on you know maybe stretch the defense out a little bit and and then you had the working parts and then your defense was contributing yeah I, I think you could argue that Rakeem Boyd I think is that caliber of running back of someone who could at least be in the conversation. Not saying he would make the trip to New York, but Santa came early for Arkansas fans. That's right. Right here he is. Right here he is. Here's your Santa. Got to win. Uh, Got to win to get the Heisman. That's the other part. You got to win more than two or three games to even not be laughed out of the room. His jackass of a head coach. True words. Uh, yeah, in over his head. And over his head, Chad, he's looking goofy at Auburn. I don't know about you guys, but he uh, they're paying that man to sit in front of those people. And the thing is, I think he's going to be, and I've said this, I think as an offensive coordinator, he's probably a really good OC. We know what he did at Clemson. You can't deny what he did before he arrived and after he arrived. Their offense was banging. There's no doubt about it. But uh, as a head coach, he's terrible. Hey, Ty, how many years before we get back to a bowl game? Tim, that's a loaded ass question, my friend. I appreciate it, but uh, I'm just I I can't I don't know. Uh, I I right now, way too early projections. I think they'd still be lucky to to. Well, I mean, you guys are gonna get at me, but I I look, it's gonna be hard to get three plus your your non conference schedule with Notre Dame. Your you know Bama is gonna be Bama Auburn. 
I don't know if they're going to be better with Chad or not, but it's still Auburn, who've um, had some pretty good success against Arkansas. Gus has a pretty nice record, and when you're in the middle of yet another rebuild, hang on, I'm getting a – who is this? You want to put these guys on call? You guys want to – let's see who this is. I bet it's a – talk to me. Hi, this is Alan with Senior Care. We are calling to let you know about a new low-cost final expense insurance plan that has just been approved in your state. This life insurance plan is designed to cover 100% of your funeral expenses. To get a quote right now, please press 5, or please press 9 to have your name removed out of our list. Again, please press 5 to get a quote on your life insurance and save some money. Am I about to die? I'm 36! Go to hell! That is not the call you want to get. How'd you guys like that little, uh, I just get you guys involved in what's going on in this house. My kids constantly are, or well, my oldest, she's always like, I want to be on your YouTube. I want to be on. I'm like, no, 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 no. Shout out to SK 4000. Also Chad Morris is straight snake is a straight snake. Uh, herb serpentine <laughs> press five. I should have. <laughs> I got to put my glasses on to read this chat. Maybe I am old. Maybe I do need to look into life insurance. Oh, I don't know, honey. Let me put on the reading glasses. Tie this day shall be henceforth. Let's see. Tie this day shall from henceforth be known as Miracle Monday for Razorback Nation. It is a sacred day. Don't die on us, Ty. I'll try not to. Uh, Jersey, Sp- <laughs> Jersey Spider Life Insurance. <laughs> Uh, we've been trying to reach you about your car warranty. This is Veronica. This is Veronica. What's up, Veronica? How you doing? I'm 36. Go to hell. Best quote of 2019. I, I I've never. That's the first for me, and that was a Bentonville number. That's the only reason why I answered it. We'll find a way to to lose to Kent State. I I I just I don't know. I, it looks. It's even more difficult for Sam Pittman year one because. Number one of of the collapse of Brett Bielema, then to transition to the Chad Morris era, it's like you're just and we've said this time and time again here, you're you're digging your own grave. It's deeper and deeper. You're more than six feet under, baby. You are still digging. And you're gonna ask Sam Pittman to come in and pull it out. Year one, I, it's it's a tall order. And I know some of you don't want to hear that. A lot of you know, patience is uh, is a tough one to preach and and uh, like I said, I, I wouldn't be too emotionally involved. Involved, I wouldn't be emotionally involved year one. Just be along for the ride, and that's not a sly on the staff or Pittman or Boyd. It, it's just it is what it is. You hope, then you build off of that, off of of whatever it is that you build year one in twenty twenty under Sam Pittman. You hope you can you 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 lay a great foundation that you can build off of it, right? Before you build your mansion, you got to lay your foundation. So Arkansas has got a long ways to go, but I think that I think with with Rakeem coming back, with the wideouts, Step is back. I don't expect any of the guys, any of the big name receivers that you all know that are household names in the state of Arkansas right now. I don't expect any of them to leave. I mean, anything could happen, but uh, and not only that, you know, it's it's you're going to have to dip into the grad transfer pool. You're going to have to grab somebody out. You're going to have to go JUCO. You're you know you're going to have to reach into that Bobby Hopper transfer tunnel. Uh, on your way out, <laughs> on your way out to Fort Smith from Fayetteville, it, it's it's just it's a lot, you know. And so I I think year one, like my too early projection, I hate doing this, but I I would be somewhere around three wins. That's where I would be. A lot could change. That's why it's a too early poll. You know, who knows? Coming out of spring, I could be like, oh my god, wait a second, we might have something. Uh, also, you look twenty five. I you know what? Shave if my if I had a shaved beard, if I or shaved face rather. You'd think I was like 25. I don't know. I've got baby face. We'll find a way to – oh, yeah, I already read that. Let's see. Uh, Chad's no sake, no snake. He's just no head coach. Yeah, yeah maybe we're being too hard on him. I, I just uh, – the coach speak at the podium, you know, he, he and you felt like with this – with the left lane hammer down stuff, and I don't even blame him. Everybody has a catchphrase. I mean, hell, we've got yes, sir, right now is a catchphrase. Uh, so, 
I, I just he comes off as one, I guess. But he's he's all talk. He's like an all talk version of Houston Nutt, except Houston Nutt could back it up. You know, you talk about you know scouting, you know, uh, and 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 uh, transforming players when once you get them get the get the kids on campus, transforming them into something, and then also finding a way to win games. Houston had it. We didn't know it at the time, and, and don't get me wrong, he had to go, ultimately, he had to, and you thought you were moving on to greener pastures, and that blew up in your damn face. But uh, three wins, question mark? I, uh, Thomas, I don't know, what do you think? I want to know what you think, because I, I have no idea. I don't. I have a hard time seeing them getting to four right now, as it stands. Again, that could change. we got a long ways to go, but right now, yeah. KJ has to be our future. Start him and ride him till the wheels fall off. Uh, I I don't know. He's got a lot of work to do. My hope for him was that, when, especially when you got Starkle on campus, was that you had Starkle for two years to start. You redshirt KJ, which they did. And you develop him along the way behind someone who's as seasoned and ex- as experienced in the SEC as a Nick Starkle, and uh, let him let him hit the field. Then at that time, I, I have a hard time putting him in the in the uh, driver's seat next year. I, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. It, it it's not impossible. And I I like KJ a lot. You guys know that if you followed me for even just the last six months, I am big on KJ. I think eventually down the road, he is a hell of an RPO quarterback. Uh, two back to back two and ten seasons lost Criswell and Robertson. Uh, let's see, will KJ learn to avoid defenders? Uh, what are the other web choices? You got me on that. I don't know what you're talking about. Other web choices. KJ need first off, and I noticed this when I was watching. Uh, when I was watching some some his highlight reel. And watching what film I could get my hands on, which is basically whatever you could find on the internet, uh, he he held on to the ball so much his senior year in high school. He would hold on to that ball and look receivers down. It was just very obvious that his, at his high school, uh, sometimes you get a kid that's as raw, you know, that's as raw as he is, it's as talented as he is. You just throw him out there and you watch him play and you run your offense. You don't really. You know, you don't really have the time to develop these kids. And some kids, they just need a little bit extra work as far as the developmental part of their, of their, you know, of their career. And I, I think he's that case. I think he's a phenomenal athlete. I mean, he's a phenomenal athlete. As I think can develop into having a solid arm, can have an SEC caliber arm. He could be an SEC caliber quarterback. Beyond that, I have no idea. I'm big on KJ. I am. I just think he's one of those kids. It's going to take a little while, and it doesn't help that his offensive lines it was garbage last year. You know what little bit he got to see. Skill position guys around him behind his other than his running backs were all freshmen. You know Woods was really your oldest guy out there catching the ball, and he's what he's a sophomore. He's a true sophomore. He's a second year guy. You know they're all kind of developing together. It's very reminiscent of the Childs, Joe Adams, Jarius Wright. Uh, that era, you know, and as they got older, they all got better together. I certainly see that happening again. I, I see that being a possibility again. And I'm so thankful they were able to keep K. That's the one thing throughout the year that I think we can, uh, we can all argue. First off, not only did he get some playing time, but he also kept his red shirt. He got to start. You know, he got to, he got to play at a higher level for more than just a few snaps, for more than just a quarter. I'm so thankful that he got that opportunity. Uh, but his like the developmental side of KJ, it's it, there's a lot of work there, and it's it's mostly his his ability, I think, to to read defenses needs a little bit of work. His obviously his, his footwork, uh, arm, mo- all, everything, his release time, it needs some some work. Most kids that age, they do. It's very rare that you get a kid that comes in and is a baller year one or year two. It takes a little bit of time. It's about their ceiling. What can they develop into? And I think that's KJ. I think he could develop into something really special. Uh, I do wish they could have gotten Jacoby Criswell in this class. Someone asked that in chat earlier. I think that was a I think that was a pretty big miss, but that's not on Pittman. Uh, Chad was all in on his kid. Let's be real. Chad was all in on his kid, and you can't blame him. And I'll say this: Chandler Morris is feisty. Okay, he had legitimate, committable offers from other schools, from other Power Fives. Uh, I, I don't know that he goes on and does anything special anywhere else. I'm not gonna, you know, I don't have a, I don't have any. Uh, crystal balls laying around here, but I, I think he could develop into something special. From what I understand, Oklahoma is interested in, in bringing Chandler on along with some other schools. I don't know where he winds up yet. Haven't heard anything on Chandler 
in a little while. But Chad put all of his – that's where he wanted to, to go. He wanted to go with his kid. And I, I can't say that I blame him. I really can't. I, again, you're talking about a four-star, highly talented kid out of Texas who's playing at a very high level in Texas where high school football is a second religion. And Jacoby, nothing against him. I, I like Jacoby too, I'm not going to lie. I think at his age he might actually be further ahead than where KJ was at. I really think that's a possibility. Unfortunately for him, he's going to go to North Carolina and he's probably going to sit there. He's going to sit there for like two years and it's going to be year three before he sees the field. We'll see how that one plays out if he's uh, patient. If he is, maybe he'll do some great things at North Carolina. I think he's capable. So, um, yeah, there's a lot going on with the quarterback situation. They need a lot of work there. Uh, there was some – I don't know why these uh, – some of your message, some of your comments got taken down from YouTube. I don't know what that was all about. What are we at on time? 40 minutes? Okay. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Let's see here. Yes, sir. Is going to derail the lane trade. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I, this staff is impressive. This is so good. This staff is so good. Let's see. Uh, Drake King would, would get us at least a five. That's if he transfers here. And I think that would absolutely be something on the table. I, I, I don't know a ton about him. I've seen his name come up on social media over the weekend. Uh, I've done very little research. I know his junior year he was phenomenal. I, I don't know what happened this year. I don't know why he didn't play more. Uh, KJ has a ton of talent. Bribes will make him a great quarterback. Or Bribes. Sorry, I thought that said Bribes. And then I was going to make fun of you for saying Bribes, but really it was me that messed up, even with my glasses on, Michael. My bad. O line improvement will be like a rising tide that lifts all Arkansas boats, including a defense which will practice against. Yeah, and uh, when you and oh man, that's actually a really good point though, Mark. I'm glad you brought that up. Clay Henry talked about that when you when you don't have that great a talent on the other side, and that's what you're practicing against. You know, throughout all off season, throughout fall camp, you know, obviously your spring camp, and then and then you down the road you get into fall camp when you're not pra- or when you're when you're practicing against bottom 5 SEC talent week in and week out that's what you're preparing yourself for and that's actually a really good point glad you brought that up but uh, Clay Henry has mentioned that a few times on the radio when he was on a uh, Bo Mattingly show from what I've heard Chandler committed to Auburn that's where I expect him to go uh, three years in the future, Drinkwitz fired from Mizzou. I've never been on board with that hire here, and I'm so happy that he wound up at Mizzou. I could be wrong. He could be unbelievable. But you talk about someone who looks like a bigger jackass than yours truly right now in front of a camera. I bet Jacoby ends up here eventually. I could I could see that happening. I mean, they, they went at him. Uh, and from what I understand, Pittman – Keeps in contact a lot, even with the kids that he that don't end up playing for him or coming and and, and uh, joining the team. That when he was here, when he was at Georgia, who are we kidding? Chandler is a little daddy's boy. He'll be at Auburn. I, don't overlook him. I'm just gonna tell you that right now. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Don't overlook Chandler. He could end up. Uh, if if he ends up with his dad at Auburn, that just, that has disaster written all over it. He needs, in my opinion, he needs to get away from his dad. But if he does go to Auburn, that that's not. I don't think. I don't know. I maybe who's who's better to run the system than your own kid? I just think that it, Chad has that hint of that stinky, nasty stench of failure from what he did here. That doesn't mean. I look. I again. I'll say it. Good offensive coordinator. I think what he did at Clemson cannot be overlooked. But. Uh, his time, supposedly anyone who knows offensive football at a very high level will tell you that his ability to coach an offense is really high. But he's just – some people just can't shake off that stench of failure, and I wonder if that's that's the case with him after Arkansas. They better get an O-line to feed to, – to, uh, let's see. They better get the O-line to the feed trough. Too small. Yeah, they got to put on some weight. I couldn't agree more, Ken. Odd deal with King. He played the first four, then redshirted. No injuries, didn't get beat out. Yeah, so I don't – okay, that's more than – I That's. I had no idea. I saw that on, on his numbers, looking at his numbers on ESPN, and I couldn't figure out what the hell. Like, if this guy's so great, well, did he get hurt? Chad is stinky. <laughs> uh, yeah, you guys – yeah. Uh, hey there. 
Hey there, Brakeem. There you go. Just patting your head. All right. Okay. We, uh, we're coming up on 45 minutes. After this, Porter and myself, our producer, are going to re- re- supposed to record episode 50 tonight. Jacob uh, just unable to make it, so we postponed the whole episode, the whole podcast for him, and it turns out he's not going to be able to do it today either. So we're gonna, it's just going to be Porter and myself. We're going to record tonight. Obviously, we've got a lot to talk about. As soon as I'm done here, we're going to get that done. So... Uh, let's see, since missing out on Criswell, who is the best available quarterback? That's a good question. I don't, I don't know who they're in on right now. I don't know who they're targeting. There's some names we could throw out there. But until dead period is over with, it, right now you might as well just be throwing darts at a, at a, at a dartboard in the, in the dark. You might as well just be, you know... You might as well have the lights out with a, with with your dart in your hand, throwing it at a dartboard. I have no idea what they're going to do at quarterback. There are some. There, there's the kid at Texas Tech. People have been talking about. There's a possibility of reaching out to him. Obviously, you've got the Houston uh, grad transfer. Can y'all catch me up, Devin? <laughs> we got a lot to talk about. We've got Jersey Spiders, Eggnog, Eggnog and Rum, also known as Crank Nog. Um. Did we talk about that? No, I don't think we did. Yeah, eggnog, supposedly when you mix it with rum, you're supposed to call it crank nog. No, crunk, crunk nog. Okay, crunk nog. My bad. It's crunk nog. C-R-U-N-K, nog. How many skill position starters from last year do you think uh, will still be starting this year? Probably all of them. (laughs) Probably all of them. Uh, You're going to have, I I imagine Hudson Henry will be your, your tight end. But uh, who knows what goes on at that position. You're going to have the possibility of some youngins coming in and, and seeing their four and then probably getting redshirted next year, assuming. Uh, like Turner, that's a good one. If it, To me, if Turner, no matter what Turner does, no matter where they put him at, you know, he signed, re- recommitted and signed to Arkansas. He's someone who will see the field. So he'll be a newbie, but I th- I don't know where they're going to put him. I don't know where the staff – you know, that was the rumor when Morris was here that he's going to end up playing safety. But now you've you've got some pretty decent depth, even with Curl leaving early. You got some decent depth at safety, so you wonder if they don't keep him on on offense, play him at wide out, and maybe he sees the field. But no, it's going to be like all of them. Hey, tied to the Hogs basketball team have a chance at Indiana on Saturday, Tim? No, they do not. They don't. They don't have it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I I'm sorry. They're just they're they're good. Arkansas is outplaying themselves, though. That's the difference between them and Indiana right now. That's the difference. We'll talk. Let me get that out of the way really quick. Let me just bring that up, and then we'll close it out. Uh, they did beat Val. That was such an ugly game. Did you guys get a chance to watch uh, Pinto? Pinto, ESPN, Pinto, ESP, ES, Pinto, in? I watched some of it. I was in there. I was in the chat. Uh Thank God for him. He's doing God's work out here, man. He is. Pinto's killing it. Uh, we had no other way. You could listen to the game, which I tried to do, but we were we were actually at my the Hudson family uh, Christmas dinner at my aunt's house out in Prairie Grove, and then on the way back, I was trying to listen to the game, and and uh, as soon as I got home, first thing I did was put on the uh, ESPN to. And if if you don't have a subscription service, and if you don't have access to the games. Download Twitch, okay, T-W-I-T-C-H, Twitch, and follow a guy named Luke Never Shaves. It's all, I think it's all one name, I think, Luke Never Shaves. Uh, he live streams the games, and it's free. Every game, I think he's done every game so far this year. Uh, I have YouTube Live, so I'm able to watch it, but uh, just a heads up for anybody. Just trying to help you all out. And I know someone earlier asked about the Discord. Let me link that to you guys really quick, too, before we head out. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Uh, this is the part I hate. Like, why can't you just – why do I have to go in and edit the link here? Uh, boop, 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 no limit. Okay. Generate new link. Copy. Here we go. All right, I'm going to throw you guys this for anybody who wants to join the uh, Discord. Bada-bing. Okay. Uh, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, Val. So, uh, I really thought they would – I mean, look, Arkansas is favored in this thing by like 90%. It was something ridiculous. and ended up being another close game. 
Uh, Indiana is uh, look. I'm going to say it right now. I think Arkansas loses that one by double. I'm not. I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer. I, Indiana is just playing some damn good basketball right now. Um, it could be a close game. There's that possibility, and we're going to go into more of that on the uh, on on Friday on the Friday live stream. But right now, Indiana is favored at 66.8 percent according to the ESPN pa- uh, Basketball Power Index. That's actually pretty legit. I'll take that. But they're 11 and one, undefeated at home. Arkansas obviously ten and one should be eleven and zero, and yeah. So I, I think it's going to be a tough game. I'm going to have a hard time saying that they don't get beat by at least double digits in that one. I just I, I, Indiana is playing really good ball. Uh, not if they play like they did against Valpo. Uh, what are you, you have to be more specific, Josh. I don't know what you're talking about. You're talking about. Are you saying that if Arkansas plays like they did against Valpo, they have a shot? Because I think you can make the argument the other way around. Indiana game is on Big Ten. Yeah, if as long as you have – if you have um, – what is it? I think – I don't know about the ESPN app. What is it, ESPN Plus? But supposedly if you have the ESPN app, the ESPN Plus that you pay for, what is it, like five bucks a month or something, or YouTube TV – or Cox, you should still have access to those games. Uh, getting slusher from uh, from BA was huge. Yeah, that was a that was that was huge. Hey Ty, Merry Christmas to you and your family, as well as all of your subscribers. Tim, you are a class act, my friend. Thank you. If it's if it's a close if it's close, Indiana will get a few calls down the stretch. No, they don't have a shot. Josh says if you're talking about our you know, yeah, I just don't see Arkansas winning that game. And look, if you play that thing neck and neck the whole time and you play just your typical great Arkansas muscleman defensive basketball against these guys and and shots land look if they if they start shooting poorly at three point range like Isaiah Joe has done most of the year I'm telling you guys his draft grade is dropping I I have a hard time seeing him right now as a first round draft pick I'm just going to say it he's a great shooter he's still one of the best but his draft stock has got to be dropping a little bit, just a little bit. Coming into the year, they had him as a first rounder, and I don't know, maybe it drops a little bit. That's a good thing though, because maybe he comes back for year three. How huge would that be uh, for the 2020 basketball season, the 2020, 2021? But yeah, if if you start struggling at three point range, uh, Indiana's got a little bit of size. They're going to be able to hustle you down inside. They're going to be able to move you, box you out well inside. It's going to be tough. Uh, you're going to have to try your best to crash the board. You're going to have to get second-chance shots if you can to, uh, and, and not get out-rebounded on a really high scale and, and keep your turnovers down. Mason Jones, what what is he averaging, like four turnovers a game? Like, the guy's got to get smarter with the ball. On the offensive end, he's phenomenal. I mean, he's capable of dropping 25 any, any night. And now that his shoulder's healed, he's starting to come back and, and playing some great basketball. But – God, he's got a con. He had what five turnovers against Val, and I think that's. I think maybe I'm wrong. But I think that's actually tied. I think he's done that one other time this year with five turnovers. He's got to calm that down. They've got to, the the transition basketball with them. Sometimes makes me nervous. They just, you know, and last year this was a problem in transition. They were turning the ball over, stupid passes, and and just giving these defenses another opportunity to take the ball away and force a turnover. They got to get smarter. Uh, or, or they're they're going to get blown out against Indiana if they're not careful. Indiana is a uh, it's pretty obvious at this point, but I think they're a, a, not just a tournament team. They look like a team that's playing like they want to go further than just making the tournament. And Arkansas is too. They're definitely I think outplaying what they have on their roster. They're playing well above what they are, and that's great. They're playing February mid to late February basketball in the month of December, and it's phenomenal. Well, and they have really since tip-off, since the beginning of the year. If they can continue that, uh, who knows what could happen. I can't wait. After the Indiana game, we're going to have a live stream. That's the plan. That's the plan right now. If it changes, I'll let you guys know. We'll have a post-game show. I'll give you my prediction on the year uh, You know, throughout the SEC and whether or not Arkansas can make the tournament. I'm excited. As of right now, I I don't like Arkansas chances, even keeping this thing like single digit. But that's okay. Just don't get throttled by like twenty twenty five. And look, that's still a respectable loss on the road. They're undefeated at home. Uh, let's see. We would need to shoot at at least forty from three to have a shot. Yeah, they're gonna have to shoot really high percentage. And 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 they can't. You know, 
these contested shots sometimes make me nervous. But I'll tell you this much. Final minutes of the game, final seconds of the game, I have no problem. Well, final seconds. Uh, I have no problem with Mason Jones having that ball in his hand. Uh, if Hogs get a couple of, of the five linemen they go after this February class, is going to be great. Yeah, they're going to stack up on some offensive line. There's no doubt that that's going to be uh, something Pittman's going to want to concentrate on. Arkansas better D up and have less than eight turnovers in Indy to keep within 15. Astute observation, can I agree? I agree. All right, I think, uh, what are we at? Coming up on an hour, we got a lot of work ahead of us. We got to get ready for the Hog Talk podcast that will be available for you guys tomorrow um, in the morning, hopefully at six a.m. You guys are loving the intro music, and we're getting a lot of love on that. I'm gonna spice it up. I'm, I wanted to do Christmas music, but then I thought, you know what? Some people are tired of Christmas music. I don't know. I I, I might have to. I'm, I might spice it up, or maybe I do Christmas music, but it's something you wouldn't expect. Some death metal Christmas music. Raw, Merry Christmas, raw. Sacrifice a lamb. Ah. That's too angry. I wouldn't do that to you. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys stopping by and listening and, and uh, being a part of everything that we do here. Thank you so much. You guys rock. You're the real rock stars. I appreciate every single one of you. I hope uh, you have a great Christmas. Merry Christmas to you all. Uh, I. I Wanted to do something this week or possibly next week where we live stream every night of the week, but uh, probably not going to happen. Uh, just things are a little bit too crazy around here. I'm still debating on doing a uh, New Year's Eve live stream. I'm not entirely. Oh, there she is with the nog. There she is with the nog just in time. No rum. Do we have rum? Come on. Bring it on, mama. Right on time, and it's my favorite, too. Highland, they make the best nog. Oh, my gosh. All right, let's get even fatter. All right. Uh, Go, Tigers. Get that out of here. Get that out, Judah. How dare you? Uh, Need to to grab a grad transfer. Uh, Hurry up and sign off so I can watch it from the beginning. Well, you still can, Daytona Beach. Love your name, by the way. Wish I was there right now. You could just go back and watch from the beginning. Uh, what is this? Oh, yeah, we have the, we, oh. We have the, <laughs> this hog talk's going to be amazing. I wish you'd done this. I wish I had had this before the live stream. Then they could see me get drunk. Well, then you could have got your own. Uh, ooh, burn. She said you could have got your own. <laughs> I didn't even know we had this. It's a little cat. Spiced rum. Well, Captain Morgan. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, remember to tune into the Hog Talk tomorrow. That will that will drop. Episode 50. It's a big one. Merry Christmas. We will. I'll try to keep you up to date if we do any special live streams or anything. You know, I'll, I'll try and keep you posted. But uh, you guys, uh, it, it, hey, Ty, you just, uh, you just wrote a hit song. Merry Christmas. Did I? I probably did. Uh, appreciate what you do. Keep it up. Thank you, guys. Remember to check out the links down below in the description box. Uh, if you want to, hey, if you if you want to check out the Patreon, the Hawk or the uh, Patreon Network Patreon is down below four dollars a month. If you want to just help contribute, if you want to throw a tip in the tip jar and, and down into the uh, in the PayPal, that's down there for you too. The link is all those links, and of course the Hog Talk podcast link is provided for you in the description box. So uh, we will. I'll see you guys again Friday, and looking forward to it. Have a merry Christmas. Be safe out there, please, if you're going out and, you know, hitting up the Cheesecake Factory, doing a little, be careful, all right? So, anyways, signing off, Woo Pig. I'll see you guys later.